What happens when a master luthier with decades of experience chooses all of his favorite specs and rolls them into an affordable package? Stick around to find out. How many times have you heard someone say If I had his money This is the new Touchstone DB Signature guitar. Just out, guys. This is pretty exciting. We're uh, really pleased to see the brand new guitar from uh, the Touchstone I like to series. call them DB Sigs. Is that what you like to call so them? So they call them on the street. Is that the yeah. DB Sigs? No, this is the Dana Bourgeois signature model. This has been around for a little bit of time now as a Lewiston built guitar, but now has been brought into the Touchstone line, which makes it pretty awesome. And like you said in the intro, now you have the best of the specs in a much more affordable package. This is in that still mid-range uh, guitar world. It's not entry-level price ranges. This uh, retails for $35.99. That is correct. And it's in both body styles, both a Dreadnought I'm and holding an OM. the OM. You are holding yeah. the Dreadnought. This is a very, very popular model. In fact, this is the number one seller for Lewiston guitars, but there are a few small changes done in the Touchstone line. Starting with the top, it is now a Torified Alaskan Sitka Spruce. Again, being the first Torified guitar in the Touchstone line, so that's kind of cool. Does have the Madagascar rosewood sides and back. A mahogany neck with the Zircote uh, cover plate, which is obviously gorgeous. It does have the uh, Dana Bourgeois signature tricolor herringbone, which I've always liked. Love that color. We found that on a few different guitars here uh, lately. Ebony bridge and fretboard does have an adjustable truss rod and a bone nut and saddle. The Schaller Grand Tune tuners, uh, this case, they are gold with ebony buttons, which Classy. I think adds to it. Uh, again, the bracing, this is really cool on this, uh, as with all the Touchstone lines, and this is kind of what separates, again, the Touchstone stuff from the Eastman guitars. This does have Adirondack spruce bracing versus Sika spruce bracing. So that does make a little bit of a change. It helps them to voice it a little bit lighter and making it a little more powerful. Does have the uh, high gloss finish, which is Dana's standard finish. True tone. Uh, it is not, it's the same formulation as the True Tone. They call it True Tone when it's in the Eastman line. This is just the standard bourgeois high gloss finish. Uh, neck finish is a matte finish. Also has a very comfortable kind of V profile uh, going on here. Uh, it does come with the uh, uh, the Touchstone cases, which have the green interior and that heavy uh, leather look on the outside. Neck, uh, the nut width on these guitars is 1 and 23 30 seconds, so that standard bourgeois style. Uh, no pickup. All right, so let's get into our rating of this particular model. Um, we played this a little bit here. Uh, I'm excited to get this in early because there's some really cool stuff going on here. So let's start with the tone. This one, uh, again, of the touchstones, I think this has probably the most full tone. I like the Torah. How do we want to handle Sikata. this? Do we want to do like you give a rating of the Dreadnought, I give a rating of the OM? Well, you can, I okay. guess. You rate yours, I'll rate mine. <laughs> All right. I think the tone on this guitar, this is probably one of the best uh, of the Touchstone series for me. I do enjoy this a lot. Lots of punch, lots of fullness. I'm going to give this a 4.5. I think the tone on it, very responsive. I love these smaller body guitars, and that's one of the things Dana and his team are really known for how to voice these. Um, I definitely would, I'd give it a 4.75 on this guitar. I just really enjoyed playing it. We can go with that. Awesome. I will go with it. All right. <clears throat> Setup and playability, this is set up just like any other uh, bourgeois guitar. Um, the neck profile is a little bit different than uh, the Lewiston guitars, but it's also different than the Eastman guitars. There's a definite V to it. It's not quite as strong as what you would see in the Lewiston ones, making it kind of a good in-between. But the playability is set up great. This one does come standard as, as medium gauge strings. Um, I got no complaints. I'm used to this setup. I think it's a great one. I'm going to give it a five. Yeah, I mean, this one easy to play. Um, like I said, these are set up a little bit heavier probably than uh, some light gauge standard guitars that we've had in here. For for my taste, I like it a lot. I think some other people may find it a little bit heavier set up. Um, the action just very slight. And I'm talking like minuscule change here. I'm going to go a little bit lower than you, John. That's just because I feel uh, some folks playing, especially on the OM bodies, might want a little bit lighter setup. For flat picking, I think this is great. I'm going to give it a 4.5. I'm 
I can do. It's, I can a, do it's a small. We're splitting hairs here. <laughs> Let's get into the aesthetics of this. The, one of the things that made the DB Sig so popular is the choice of the combination and the look of it. I love the tricolor herringbone. You guys know that. I love this subtle inlay yeah, pattern that is in here. That. It's a little bit more than what you'd expect. It's not just dots. It's not just snowflakes. It is a true inlay pattern, but it's very subtle at the same time. And I absolutely love the color of the torrified Sitka top combined with the Madagascar rose the binding. That's where I really color. love it. So for me, looks wise, I'm going to give this a 4.75. I'm, I'm going to match you right there. I also really love these uh, Ivoroid uh, bridge pins. Bridge pins. Everything on it's just classy. The the, uh, the gold tuning hardware. I like um, gold hardware. Yeah. I do. I think it's all very classy, so I'm going to give this a 4.75 as well. There you go. Let's get into build quality a little bit, Jeremy. Um, there's nothing I see on this. Uh, this has got all the fine details. I mean, there are some different finish uh, feels to it than what a Lewiston guitar comes in, but I don't think that uh, bothers me in any way. I don't see any weird joints, anything. It's got all the clean lines. It has just about everything I would expect, and, and especially at this price point, there's nothing that I would have a problem with as far as the build on this. So again, I'm gonna go with a 4.75. Yeah, I, we, this is a combination of the quality that Eastman's been putting out and also the, the standards that Dana holds them to. And it, we've been up there to their factory when they get the guitars through there, especially when they're in the prototype stage, and they don't let anything pass that is not gonna stand up to that Dana Bourgeois uh, reputation. So I'm gonna give this a 4.75 as well. Lifetime warranty with these, they stand behind the build quality, so. Yeah. Absolutely. Easy, easy score. All right, now we can talk about the shop sustainability. This one is going to be, uh, I'm going to say it's not going to pass this because it does use Madagascar rosewood, and we do know that that is a very touchy subject. Subject. I'm sure and certain that all of this has been uh, papered and done, vetted as well as can be, but it is definitely not a sustainable wood uh, that is available everywhere. Um, now, again, I know that they have done all the precautions that they possibly can, but it's still going to make it a little bit tough to make that pass our shop sustainable uh, standard. Yes, and that's why for every one of these guitars we sell, we will plant five trees as a just kind of a offset. But we definitely want to encourage the uh, the mills and the yeah the manufacturers to make sure that they are uh, keeping that in mind when they build these guitars. Now we get into that overall value. Guys, I think this is where the Touchstone line is officially going to hit its stride. Uh, the vintage guitar was fantastic. The Country Boy was also fantastic. But this one at this level. price point is pretty darn impressive. Uh, to get all the key features of here, the tone quality, the look, uh, everything about this guitar It feels to like me, you're getting it, a boutique build guitar. I mean, this everything about it feels like those boutique levels at a more for probably one of the lowest price ranges to get into this level of guitar. I agree with that 100%. I think this one's really going to bite into the market, and if it doesn't, it should because there's a lot of value here at that $3,500, $3,600 price point. There's nothing that I know that's going to kind of hit all the same uh, check, check marks on this particular guitar. There's just a lot going on here. So I actually am gonna go for overall value on this one, guys, a five. I don't think you're gonna find much better guitar choices at that price point. I was gonna say the same thing, uh, a five all the way. <laughs> I, you'd have to cut out a lot of these features to get the price down any lower than this. And I think they found that perfect balance between making this stand out from the other two Touchstone guitars. It, it seems to feel like it's a level above those and the price doesn't jump very much at all on that. So I really uh, do think five, that absolutely. this is the spot where everybody recognizes what the Touchstone series is all about. And because of the fact that it really does give so much more value and is not as common as the two models that were before this. And I think people are now gonna start paying attention to this entire series. Um, let's talk about a few questions that people have quite often on this. We're gonna talk about who is this for? Uh, for, for you, honestly, that OM yeah. suits you about as perfect as anything. And it's this is, I don't play enough guitar to justify jumping into a Thompson or Yamaha or, you know, a lot of these really great sounding boutique, uh, Boucher guitar. But this is kind of getting me into what feels like that boutique quality level, just the look, the, the build of it, the tone, playability, setup, all those things you're getting is checking off, but one that I could, I could justify spending that much money on a guitar when I'm not a full-time guitar player or you know, for that home player that just really wants that 
boutique experience without. I think you've undercut $5, your. I, I agree with you. I think you are the perfect candidate. The guitar you're holding fits you and what you do more than just about. But you're holding it at a lower standard. A great guitar player that's not, this is not your full time gig. This is not your full uh, investment level. This is your, I got a guitar that helps me to become the best guitar player I can be. Um, I agree with you. I think this is a budget conscious upper end pro guitar. Cons of this instrument, we always try to answer what are the downsides of this instrument. I mean, I guess the biggest one is not everybody has a $3,500 price range, yeah. uh, to, you know, budget to work within or a little bit over that, sorry. Um, so I guess that would be the biggest con, but this also comes down to what is it you're trying to get done. Uh, I don't know if I can necessarily call that a con because it's really kind of hit a mark that nobody else is really hitting. Absolutely. You're getting top level uh, appointments at uh, mid tier priced, you know, in the, in the acoustic pro level instrument world, uh, mid, mid price kind of uh, space. Uh, comparisons, uh, the biggest obvious comparison is the Lewiston built uh, DB SIG. That is a fantastic guitar. It's one of our top sellers. It's one of their top sellers. There are some major differences here, uh, biggest of which is a Sika a spruce top versus the Adirondack top that's standard. Uh, you can still get a Lewiston built in a signature in a Sika spruce top, but um, and honestly, I'm just I think it does compare extremely well. I don't think that most people when they see this guitar are going to be able to tell a big difference, even when they hear it. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a massive uh, like, oh my God, that's that's a touchstone version. Yeah. That was a cool thing that Dana. That's his goal is that unless people look inside the sound hole, he doesn't want them to tell the difference between the two. He wants people that own this to feel like. Uh, they're playing a bourgeois-approved guitar. Mm
Guys, this is the Dana Bourgeois Signature Touchstone guitar, and uh, this has definitely been another very smart move in that Touchstone line. DB, really, you've done it again. Yeah. So Dana and uh, Eastman have partnered up, and in case you didn't already know that, by before this guitar and what we've talked about in here. And we actually did a video, in fact, in interviewing Dana Bourgeois as what that relationship is all about and also what's going on uh, at the Lewiston factory. And we have a video here that you can click right after we this. We all the way up right to Maine here. to film yeah. this thing, so you guys got to watch it. You have to. So click on this. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you with the next video.